Good afternoon. We'll be studying Chapter 5, Inductive Inference and its Types, Part 2. Now we'll do the third type of uh, induction, that is scientific induction. What is the main task or the aim of the scientist to understand and explain the facts? So let us see what is scientific induction. Uh, Mill and Bacon has explained the meaning of scientific induction. According to them, uh, scientific induction is a process of establishing a generalization which expresses a causal relationship. So, in this method of induction is a scientific method and in which we pass on from a particular statement to a general statement which expresses a causal relationship. So, what, does the, uh, what do the scientists do? They analyze and find out the causal relationship. Means in scientific induction, there is analysis of the observed instances which we do not do in the case of simple enumeration. Now, let us see the stages in scientific now let us understand the four stages in scientific induction. The first is observation. What do, uh, do the scientists do? They observe some instances and they find that they possess certain common property. So some instances are observed and it is found that they possess certain common property. Then the second is generalization. On the basis of the observation of few instances that possess certain common property, they generalize about all the instances of that kind. So, a generalization is made that all instances of that kind have the same property. Now, after that, they analyze and find the causal law. Then the scientists, what they do, the observed instances, they analyze to discover whether there is any causal relationship for example, they may observe few metals and they find that when heated, they expand. So now they generalize that all metals expand when heated. So what do they do? Analyze the observed instances and find whether there is any causal relationship between heat and expansion. And if uh, they have to verify that causal relationship, to test whether it is in reality true or not, they will perform an experiment. So, the last stage is verification stage where the scientists will perform an experiment to verify and to establish the suggested causal relationship. And after performing an experiment, they really find that it expands when heated then that cause, uh, then heat is said to be the cause of expansion. In this case, so the causal relationship will be established. Now, let us understand scientific induction with an example. The first stage is observation. What did the uh, people observe? That in Mississippi, many people were suffering from pellagra who had deficit food. So, a generalization was made on the basis of the observation of few people that all people of Mississippi suffering from pellagra had deficit food. This was the generalization. The third stage is analysis and causal law. So, what they do is the observed instances are analyzed here and then the causal relationship is found between them. And let us see what they do. They define the problem, they collect the data, identify the possible causal factors, then they identify the root cause and then recommend and implement the solution. So the observed instances were carefully analyzed and was noticed that for good health, some nutritious elements in food are very essential. The analysis suggested that absence of these elements in food is the root cause of pellagra. Last stages verification. 
here the the causal relationship was verified let us see how did they perform an experiment to verify the causal relationship an experiment was performed where 10 persons in mississippi were given deficit diet but children in orphans and in one jail of mississippi people were given complete diet and then the it was found that pelegra deaths recorded in mississippi were 1535 but not a single child from orphans or people from the jail had developed pelegra why this happened because they were given complete diet in orphans and in jail and so the element which was nutritious for good health was present in that diet and so they did not develop pelegra whereas those who were not given complete diet 10 persons they develop pelegra thus the causal relationship was established this view of mill and bacon of scientific induction was criticized let us see the criticism to mill and bacon's view of scientific induction first is that all scientific generalizations do not express causal laws that is let us take an example the generalization that all whales are warm blooded is not causal the property of being warm blooded is not an effect of being a whale second criticism is that the experimental method can provide only direct evidence the direct evidence consists of those cases which fall within the scope of the generalization but in science a generalization does not stand alone it is a part of a system so it gets support from the other generalizations established in the system the support from the other generalizations in the system forms the indirect evidence for it so we may now define scientific induction as the process of establishing a generalization on the basis of both direct and indirect evidence the following generalizations for example all metals expand when heated and all whales are warm blooded let us understand this with this definition direct evidence for the generalization about metals consists of those pieces of metals on which experiments have been conducted but not only metals other material bodies like gases too expand when heated the generalizations about the other material bodies form indirect evidence for the generalizations regarding metals in a similar way direct evidence for the proposition whales are warm blooded consist of observing the whales and indirect for it is the other mammals that is the cats the lions the ship and bats two are known to be warm blooded so we can observe them and we can conclude about whales so this is how the process of establishing generalization in science is based on direct and indirect evidence 
will understand what is hypothetical deductive method it is a scientific method of induction in which hypothesis and deductive reasoning is involved there are five stages in it the first stage is observation and feeling of a problem um the scientist are more interested in understanding explaining and describing the facts for which they do the observation and when they come across a familiar solution which fails to explain their observation or when a new fact new facts cannot be explained by the known laws a problem is felt so what they do the second stage is formation of an initial hypothesis when the observed facts cannot be understood then the scientist puts forth a temporary solution to explain the observed facts this tentative or temporary solution is called hypothesis now then we come to the third stage that is collection of additional facts and modification of hypothesis if necessary we already know that hypothesis is a guess a scientist has to find out whether his guess is supported by facts so using the hypothesis as a guide he observes new facts which are relevant to the problem the additional facts that are collected may support his hypothesis in that case the hypothesis is accepted and if it does not support the hypothesis then it is the hypothesis is either modified or rejected and a new hypothesis will take its place modification means changes are brought in the hypothesis only in rare cases the very first hypothesis is the correct solution in more usual cases the number of hypotheses are rejected before the collect uh, before the correct solution is found so deductive development of hypothesis is the fourth stage where we see that in this stage is not required in some cases of scientific investigation where the hypotheses are verified directly by observation or by performing an experiment the hypothesis which cannot be verified directly in that case the scientist makes use of deductive reasoning in this the scientist constructs a deductive argument where they suppose the hypothesis to be true and using it as a premise the consequences are deduced from it the last is verification of the deduced consequences that is the hypothesis your what happens is the hypothesis is tested by appeal to facts if the deduced consequences occur it is said to be confirmed if they do not occur then it is said to be disconfirmed a hypothesis may be tested or verified either by observation of facts or by conducting experiment but whenever experiment is not possible it is preferred to simple observations testing is done at the last stage and if it is confirmed and said to be true then it is a solution final solution to the problem let us understand hypothetical deductive method with an example on tiki expedition on tiki is a boat raft a primitive boat or a raft named after some god let us see the first stage observation and feeling of a problem it was observed that there are similarities between the ancient customs of the natives in south sea islands and the inhabitants of south america though they were there was a distance between the two places means these two places the south sea islands and south america they were very far away from each other yet 
people living in South Sea Islands and South America were very much similar. So this was their observation and the problem was that how is that if they were so far away from each other yet they are very much similar in their habits or in their customs. The second stage is for formation of an initial hypothesis. So yes work was done that the people from South the islands might have come from South America. So, some sociologists proposed the hypothesis, guesswork they did, that the natives of South Sea Islands came from South America. Now, the third stage, let us take the third stage, collection of additional facts. The sociologists could not find any evidence in its support. So the hypothesis could not be directly verified. It appeared impossible that thousands of years ago these primitive people could have undertaken such a journey of several months. So they had to dispute it. Now the fourth stage is deductive development of hypothesis. What did the sociologists do? Assuming the first hypothesis to be true that they might have come from South America. People living in South Sea Islands might have come from South America. Assuming this to be true, they deduce the consequences that if they have come, they have traveled from South America to South Sea Islands, then they might have traveled by sea routes in a primitive boat. The primitive boat is loosely constructed raft with poor facilities for steering and only a limited space for storing food. And they thought that such a primitive boat must be capable of undertaking the journey in those days. Then these consequences had to be tested. So the fourth or fifth stage is verification of hypothesis. This hypothesis was confirmed by performing an experiment. They had to perform an experiment and what did they do? The sociologists undertook a trip in such a boat under the prevailing conditions and reached the destination. They arrived at the South Sea Islands from South America after approximately 100 days. So their hypothesis was confirmed. It was considered as true and accepted as the solution to the problem. So in this session you have studied scientific induction and hypothetical deductive method which are scientific methods of induction. Thank you.